Okay, so do you understand fractions? Well, hopefully you do. And if you're like really strong at fractions, you can definitely tell me the lowest common denominator between these two fractions right here. Matter of fact, if you know how to find the LCD, go ahead and put the LCD into the comment section, but better yet, tell me uh, how you calculate the LCD, okay? Basically, act as if you were tutoring me in the math and say, okay, this is how we find the LCD. This is why we need the LCD, and uh, this is how you find it. Now, if you ever want to know uh, how strongly you understand something, think about if you could teach that topic, okay? So let's say you have a younger brother or sister, and they are struggling in fractions. Could you teach them about the LCD if you could? Okay, and they're like, oh, wow, you're so smart. I totally get this now. Well, that means you yourself know that really, really strongly. Now, uh, here, the question again is, do you understand fractions? I'm talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions, finding the LCD, uh, knowing about mixed numbers and proper fractions. There's a lot to know about fractions. And a lot of you have been away from fractions for many years, and that's okay, okay? But you want to brush up on your arithmetic skills. And if you're a current math student, you absolutely must understand fractions. So I'm going to show you the LCD between these two fractions in just one second, and then I'm going to walk through and give you a quick crash course on how to find the lowest common denominator uh, when you have two fractions like this. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true calling uh, to teach as many people as I possibly can uh, mathematics, okay? And I'm telling you right now, all of you can be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math, okay? There is no such thing as a bad math student. So please don't give up. There's nothing wrong with you. If you're struggling in math, there is nothing wrong. What you need is great math instruction. Okay, so if you're trying to learn math and you're totally confused, well, that's not going to work. Okay, math is a technical subject. And the way I like to teach math is to kind of take the technical things and kind of dial them down. Right? I like to uh, teach math in language that's easy to understand so everybody can, can kind of get what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that has math on it, things like the GED, ASVAB, SAT, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. If you truly want to be great at math, you have to take fantastic math notes. This is non-negotiable. So if your notes are so-so, start improving your notes and things will get much better for you. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that will uh, definitely help me out. Okay, so we want to find the lowest common denominator. We have 1 40th and 3 25ths, okay? Now, why would we need the LCD in the first place? Let's just kind of, you know, ask that question. Well, anytime you're trying to add or subtract fractions, the denominators must be the same, okay? So, you know, people, uh, when they're looking at fraction problems, they're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to find LCD. Well, not all the time, okay? But if you're trying to add or subtract fractions and the denominators are not the same, well, then we need to find that lowest common denominator. And this is a bigger, broader topic in fractions. Uh, I'll, I'll give you kind of some additional suggestions about how to learn fractions, but let's just kind of focus on the LCD. And what is the LCD between these two fractions? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The LCD is 200, okay? So that is the lowest common denominator, all right? So now, of course, we could have taken our fractions here, one over uh, 40, Basically, what we're going to do, we would have to rewrite each of these fractions, so we would have 200 in the denominator, and that would be our lowest common denominator. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice long happy face and A plus A100. Ooh, I'll give you a thousand percent. Nah, that's not. That's just too much. Okay, I mean, uh, you know, there are 
I know today you can get GPA. Uh, back in my days, you get the highest you can get on it. Your grade point average was like 4.0, but today you can get like 9.2 GPAs with all these AP and honor classes, which is pretty cool. But a thousand percent, no, I, I can't. I just can't justify that. But maybe a, you know, uh, you know, 110 percent. But anyways, listen, I would give you a thousand percent if you were able to. Uh, tutor this to somebody who, were, who was completely lost in fractions and they were like, oh my goodness, you're amazing. I totally understand it. But if you were able to do that, then yeah, maybe I would give you a thousand percent. But anyways, let's throw in a few stars so you can celebrate your success with finding the LCD. Okay. So again, you know, your ability to find the LCD is one thing. And the uh, numbers that we're looking at here are the fractions. These are not too difficult. One over 40 and three over 25. So if you got the LCD uh, in, with this particular problem, that's pretty good. But what if I gave you something like this, 39 over 10, 26, and, oh, I don't know, 15 over 7,081. Okay. Now, let's suppose we had to find the LCD here. Probably a lot of your expressions would be like, all right, I'm not watching your video anymore. Uh, I am done with you, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, listen, uh, you know, how we find the LCD with these fractions is the same procedure as how we found the, uh, or how we are going to find the LCD with these fractions here. OK, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right. So, again, we're trying to find the lowest common denominator if we wanted to add these fractions or. Uh, subtract them, we we can't do them, we can't add them without them being the same denominator. In other words, if I had one-fifth plus two-fifths, I can add these fractions because the denominators are the same. We simply add the numerators. So the answer is three-fifths. But in this situation, obviously the denominator is not the same. That's why we need the LCD. So that's why we have to find the LCD if you're you know just curious about that. Now, let's just take a look at a super easy problem right here. One third plus two fifths. Most students, have, you know, I suspect, or most people, if I said, hey, what's the LCD here? You would just say, oh, it's 15. Okay. And you would be like, well, why is it 15? And you would be like, well, just because, right? Well, yeah, it is true. Now, the LCD is 15. Now, one way to think of the LCD is the lowest number that both of these numbers divide into. Okay, so what's the lowest number that both 15, uh, that w w both 3 and 5 can divide into, okay, evenly without a remainder? So 5 goes into 15 and 3 goes into 15 without a remainder, but they also go into 30, right? So 3 is divisible. Uh, we can divide 3 into 30 without a remainder, and we can also uh, divide 5 into 30 without a remainder, but this is not the lowest number. 15 is the lowest number, so this is another kind of good way to think of uh, what the LCD is, but the LCD has a uh, kind of very specific um, definition to it, right? Let's get into this right now. Okay, so the LCD, let me kind of erase all this right here, is effectively, and this is kind of like uh, not super detailed. I'm going to explain this a little bit more here, but effectively what we need to do is prime factor, okay, each of the respective denominators, we have to prime prime factor, find the prime factors of each of these denominators, and then we're going to have to have each of the respective prime factors represented as a product, okay, in our LCD. So what is a prime factor of three? Easy. Three times one, there is just one factor, that's three. And what is the prime factor of five? Well, one times five, one is always a prime factor. We don't have to worry about that. So it would be five. So the LCD is going to be three times five, which of course is 15. All right. So, you know, kind of looking at this simple uh, formula, you know, in this real basic problem, this is how we want to think of the LCD. So let's get into our problem now. So we have one over 40 and three over 25. So we're going to have to take a look at each of these numbers, 40 and 25 and find the prime factors. So the easiest way to do this is to uh, create a factor tree. So and there's a couple different ways you can approach this. So 40, okay, of course is say two times 20. I'm gonna write it as four times 10. I'll get to 25 here in a second. So we just keep factoring the factors of 40 until we, uh, we run into prime factors. So four times 10, these numbers here could continue to be factored. So four 
is the same thing as two times two. And like, oh, two is prime number, so let's circle it. This is uh, prime number, here's another two here. And then 10 is two times five, so two and five are both prime factors. So we just circle all of our prime factors. Now we can um, basically write 40 as the product of these prime factors. In other words, two times two times two, which is eight times five is 40. But we don't wanna um, write this as two times two times two. We wanna use powers, that's really important. You'll see why here in a second. So 40 is the same thing as two cubed times five. And that is what we need to do. We need to prime factor. Uh, we want to uh, write the prime factors of this number. Now, what I'm describing to you is the same thing or the same procedure that we use when we're finding the LCD of algebraic expressions, things called rational expressions. Very, very important. Uh, and so anyways, that's for another uh, topic. By the way, if you need help with just basic fractions and fundamental mathematics, check out my Math Foundations course. You can find it, of course, in my Math Help Program or my pre-algebra course. Both of those courses are good for basic math. Uh, if you want a little bit more than basic math, then check out uh, pre-algebra. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at 25. So that's going to be pretty easy. So 5 times 5, these are both prime numbers. So 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. All right, so now we have our prime factors of our respective denominators. Now we can easily calculate the LCD. All right, so 40, uh, its prime factors is 2 cubed times 5, and 25, its prime factor is uh, prime factors, or it's 5 squared or 5 times 5. So the LCD is going to be the product of the, each uh, unique prime factor between all the prime factors that we have between uh, however many denominators um, uh, you know we're dealing with. Okay, so we have to look at all of our little prime factors here. So here we have a two cube. We're going to need that represented in our LCD. Okay, so each one of these prime factors has to be represented. Now here we have a five, and here we have a five squared. But really, five is really five to the first power. Okay, 5 to the first is the same thing as 5. So here we have a 5 to the first, and over here we have 5 squared. Okay, what happens when we have the same number but to a different power? Well, you always take the one with the highest power to represent in our LCD. Okay, so we don't need to write 5 and then, and then another 5 squared. That's too, You don't do that. Okay, that's incorrect. What you have to do is look at the highest power of this number. Okay, so here's five to the first. This is five to the second power. So we're going to take and put the five to the second power into our LCD. All right, so now we're ready just to go ahead and calculate this out. So what is two cubed? Two cubed is the same thing as what? Two times two times two, that is eight. Five squared, of course, is five times five is 25. Eight times 25 is 200. Okay, so that is the LCD. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, boy, that is a lot of work. I could, I know how to do this. It was much easier. You made this too hard. Da, 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 da. Listen, okay, yeah, maybe, okay? But then again, I would challenge you to do a problem like this, okay? Or let's even make it crazier, maybe something like this, right? And that would just be like, oh, my goodness, you would really not be happy about that situation. But I'm telling you right now, you need to understand the procedure to finding the lowest common denominator. This is very, very important, not only in arithmetic, but when you're dealing with uh, algebraic fractions, things like rational expressions, etc. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.